All right, everybody, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast. And if you tuned in yesterday, we all thought it was going to be a high scoring affair, varying degrees of who would win this thing, but we all thought it was going to be high scoring. Totally was not the complete opposite. This thing went to a shootout, but the Avalanche do get that extra point in the Nathan McKinnon goal uh, in the shootout, the only goal that went in. And it was a two to one victory for the Avs. Two games in Canada. Two victories, one more to go. New episode of Locked On Avalanche coming at you. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Locked On Avalanche podcast. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day, I am your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day. That's always appreciated. Follow us on our social media outlets, L-O-P-N underscore Avalanche on Twitter, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram. Questions, comments, concerns, and opinions to Locked On Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us on our YouTube channel over on YouTube. Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live. And, of course, sign up for our subtext uh, subscription and talk to us directly about things like this this game that just uh, concluded as we're recording this just concluded uh, against Toronto a two to one shootout uh, so we'll get to all of it including our sound check a little bit later on and I have a question that I want to bestow upon you a little bit later as well mm. how this game was played so uh, we'll get into that a little bit later as well. But let's just kind of dive into the the game. The Avs, um, like I said in the beginning, we thought it was going to be high scoring. Uh, you heard the TNT broadcast, even thought this thing was going to be high scoring. It just had all the makings of that. And there's the beauty of hockey. What you expect, you don't get. Uh, if you want to back that up even a little bit more to the other night when the Chicago Blackhawks beat the Boston Bruins. So you just never know in this sport, which makes it so great. Um, and it was a different, I mean, this was a defensive game. This was, I think, without a doubt, the best defensive game that the Colorado Avalanche had played this season. When you yep. take into account who it was against in the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with, so many of the ups and downs for the avalanche being pointed at the defense and the lapses that they had and misassignments. And ironically enough, the best defensive game the avalanche have played would be on Samuel Gerard's 400th NHL game. Yeah. It just, it just fits, but no, it was, it was exactly what you want to see. And it was against an opponent that you were really curious about how the avalanche would match up. The last time these two teams played, it was not pretty. And this one was about as just dead even all the way through. Both teams scored in the first, and that's it. And that was it. <clears throat> and, and yeah, you could say that they were evenly matched. Um, but ha even saying that, I kind of feel like the Avalanche just kind of had, like, th they were in command. Yeah. They didn't let this game get out of hand. They never you never saw Toronto have that big push. You know what I mean? And it's not like they needed to, it's not like, not like they were trailing, but that you know those offensive possessions when you're just circling. There's one that sticks in my ha head for Toronto, but it wasn't like die it wasn't like the Avs were were just on their heels and just following it, Toronto just had good possession once and we're rotating and and then eventually it ended up being nothing it didn't translate into anything and and that was the entire game the avs had a game plan a defensive game plan and it worked really to perfection i was really really impressed because we've all been you know this this whole season with the injuries and the ups and downs and the win, winning streaks and the losing streaks defensive lapses like it's all been there where the, like they, they 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 just can't put everything together at once this was another game because you didn't really get scoring, so you didn't really put the scoring in. But, you know, the defense wins championships, which you hear across sports. This type of game at this stage in the season, this defensive style of game, really kind of as a fan has to make you feel good going into hopefully the playoffs. I mean, it's looking good. 
to know that, yeah, we can play that style of game too if we need to. And how we dance on this razor thin line in the game of hockey, when you play like the Avalanche did when it comes to defense, the offense helping out the defense and playing at 60 minutes of that same style. If we were on the losing side of this game, we could easily nitpick some decisions that were made, some passes that were made. Um, like there were, there were a lot of like things that you could go back. If you lost, you said, if we would have ended the third period a little bit better, we, we had all the momentum to put that away, but there were some questionable passes. But to see the defense hold up through that entire game and push all the way through overtime to get us to that shootout that we capitalized, this is the win that you want. Toronto right now is trying to figure things out. After the Buffalo game, after this Avalanche game, they played tight. They played the Avalanche. They played them tight all the way through. And they didn't, there wasn't sloppy mistakes. The Avalanche had five power plays converted on one. It's one of those that, on the losing side, you're nitpicking this all the way through, but the avalanche on uh, being on the winning side can really contribute this win to the defense and holding it all the way through. And like, this is what happens when you play a 60 minute game, you have opportunities to beat really good teams when you probably shouldn't have. Yeah. I mean, once you get to a shootout, I feel like, okay, like now, now, both teams now, now it's just a crap shoot you know what yeah. i mean like so you you know if even though like maybe the toronto fan base is is not happy because you didn't get that extra point i get it but it happened to shoot anything yeah. can happen during that abs are feeling good because obviously they got the extra point but um i i really i say like their defense was was good which it, it definitely was on the offensive end you had that feeling like if you get an opportunity, you need to take advantage of it because they're, they're going to be few and far between. And, and even though it was earlier in the game when Val Nechuskin had that breakaway yeah. when they were shorthanded yeah. uh, and he, and he missed the net, uh, I kind of felt like, man, I really, you don't say like, oh, I hope a shorthanded opportunity doesn't come back to bite us. Yeah. But I was sitting there thinking you're not going to get that good of a look for the rest of the game. Uh, they had one before that. It was uh, Evan Rodriguez wide open in front yeah. of the net. I think it was Miko Rantanen who kind of threw like a, a blind back. He knew it was there, but he kind of threw it to him directly right in front of uh, the goal. And he sailed it wide. Yeah. No, was not challenged at all. So those two stick out in my head as like, man, like th those were like the opportunities that you had to have. Take those away. I thought the Avalanche, even like on an off offensive, like, yeah, I think they had like 25 shots on goal or something like that, um, and not a lot in the third. But I thought the Avs' transition game was spectacular. Yeah, I thought they were exiting the defensive zone, getting into their offensive zone. Some of the best I've seen this year by them. Um, in in the, the, the neutral zone, like when they were on defense, they were really standing up. Toronto, their forechecking, I thought was great. Not that they were giving Toronto fits and turning the puck over, but they were making them make maybe like a pass and maybe a hair before they wanted to. This was a technical game yeah. from beginning to end for both teams. But guys that were focused on the avalanche, I thought they, they, they played their game plan from minute one to all the way to minute 60. This was a, a, a technical, technical game from beginning to end. And honestly, if you take a step back, this is 120 minutes, including that Montreal mm -hmm. game, a very technical, really good zone entries. And you could see what the score looks like against a quality opponent, Montreal, playing that same like confident zone entries and the really good forecheck, the opportunities on shorthanded plays, if you take that against a quality opponent like Toronto, how it plays, but this is two games. The avalanche have been very cerebral and smart with how they play. And you really like how this avalanche team is playing right now, because it's not just good moments. It's a good philosophy, right? Yeah, definitely. Totally, totally agree with that. All right, let's hear from uh FanDuel and then uh, more to get on this game, get into stats and, um, you know, as we're saying, it, it was an evenly matched game. 
Does that make you feel good about something particular with the Avalanche? I'll explain what I mean right after we hear from FanDuel. And we are beyond the midway point of the NBA season. So now is the perfect time to download the FanDuel app. It's America's number one sports book because new customers get a no sweat first bet for up to $1,000. That is bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And you can bet on everything for the money line, two point scores, two three pointers drained. And, you know, today, if you're listening to this when it's released, uh, late Wednesday, early Thursday. Thursday it, Thursday and Friday are, are maybe my two favorite days of the sports season. And that that first the opening round NCAA tournament, is there anything better, man, other than the no. Stanley Cup final, obviously? <laughs> is there anything better than it? It's, it, it? it's honestly one of my favorite days. And it's like not affiliated with hockey. I could just sit there yeah. and have no vested interest and just turn on whatever game, and it's right. a blast. Right. 100%, man. I, I absolutely love it. So it's uh, – it, it, it is here, and we didn't have it a couple of years ago. I remember they canceled it yeah. because of COVID, but now it, it's back better than ever. And uh, now is the time to download FanDuel and get in even on some NCAA tournament action. So FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss a chance to get your no sweat first bet for up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Okay, so we were talking about how, yeah, it was an evenly matched game, maybe ticked towards the Avalanche side a little bit because even though it was a tie game, just seemed like they were in control a little bit more of the flow of the game. Does that... Does it make you feel good? Like, say, say we were just saying how the Avalanche, or not the Avalanche, like, like the losing team, like you're taking, it hurts a little bit more because it was such an evenly matched game. I haven't really thought of this at all during the season except for this game. And that is, man, like, yeah, okay, this, this was a, a good, tight game. What if? I'm playing the what if game now we had someone like Gabe Landeskog and we, and, and Arturi Lekkinen didn't break his finger a couple of days ago. And Josh Manson was back. I've never really used that as like, well, if those guys were there for this particular game would have been a different outcome. I am for this one because I feel like this could be, we don't know. Could it be a, Stan a Stanley cup final matchup? Absolutely. It could be. There's a lot of different combinations of what it could be, but I, I am I'm feeling really good about how the Avalanche played Toronto, even if they had lost in a shootout, which yeah. again is the crap shoot could go either way. I'd still be sitting here saying as evenly matched as that game was again, maybe I would take it a little bit to the Avalanche side. If we had what we don't, I'm feeling even better about going up against the team like Toronto. I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this where I don't get completely destroyed in the comments. Just throw it out there. It depends on when Landy or Lecky would be back. If they came back, if this was the return game, it'd be weird. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, yeah. I don't want to yeah, get if, what you're saying, but not that, yeah. <clears throat> because honestly, I think I'm, again, I don't, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. I'm glad they're not there. Because this team has had to learn how to play this way. Right. They don't just show up and play this way. Like you would with a completely healthy team. Manson, Lecky, Landeskog, you show up and you win games with that full healthy roster. They've had to learn how to play this way. How yeah. to use guys like Mulligan, hey, Galchenyuk. Like it's, you, you're having to put these rosters together and figure it out and it's one of those, like, if we had a healthy roster, I'm starting to just appreciate the roster that's on the ice as my 22-23 Colorado Avalanche. <laughs> Whoever shows up, that's mm -hmm. my team. Because what they're learning about how to play and different ways to win, it's kind of similar to how they ended the last couple months of last year. So It is, yeah. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> 
and I agree with you. I feel like it, like this the team that's out there now is winning, and that only helps them going forward for the rest of this year because you don't know what you're going to have going into the postseason. Yeah. And if this is it, games like this you can look back on and, and say, like, hey, like we went up like, had a really good team in their house. And yeah, we needed overtime or a shootout to do it, but we did it. So you you do like it, it's a galvanizing win for those guys that are, are you know have to step it up a little bit, a little bit more because of who's out. And if you do meet Toronto again, it's good, it, the only time you can is obviously in in the Stanley Cup final. You know, Lekkinen will be have back for three rounds by then, right? So he'll should be back in the groove of things. We don't know what's going to happen with Gabe Landeskog, but you know. Possibly I, I, Manson at that time as well. You would think so, yeah. I, I, so, so you, you'll have at least Lekin and Manson healthy and, and kind of uh, have a number of games under their belt. <clears throat> but they've played obviously during the season, so I'm not so concerned about them returning as you are with Landeskog. But it just goes back to if you know, as I'm saying, like to, to start this whole like discussion is I, I feel good that we kept up with a team like Toronto. Got the extra point, obviously. And this is really like the first, like I, I didn't, I haven't used it as an excuse. I haven't yeah. used it as like, ah, oh, injuries, injuries. If we had, if we had Kale McCarr when he was out, we would have won that game. You know, you can say, you can say Landis Scott for every single game that they've lost this year, but I don't play that game. And I feel like I can do it now based on a win. I don't want to do it after a loss because that's too easy to do. But after a win, I can be like, yeah, that was a good win. And we didn't even have those guys. So so just imagine if we did, how do you not feel better about that? How do you yeah. not feel better about your chances being bit down key, key pieces of your team and you performed like you did? You you were you, it was weird, like you it was a one-to-one game, but you felt like both teams were were skating well, but you I mean on the avalanche side of things, you felt like they were going to get uh, like the, the put out their best opportunity and they skated well with them. And they, they, I, I'm impressed right now. I really am. I'm really impressed by that effort. Yeah. You use the, if we had insert player name here, excuse when the avalanche were playing honestly bad and you want, you knew these players would bring them to good. The avalanche are playing good right now. And mm-hmm. you have this feeling that if Manson or Lecky or Landis Gog walk through the door, they go from good to cup contender again. It's it's that next window right. up that you know <clears throat> yeah. they can improve, but the Avalanche are in a good baseline right now that they can win games against good opponents as they are, and whoever comes back is only going to add to that. Right. Uh, so let's get to a couple of stats here. Um, the Avs with 29 shots on goal. So the Maple Leafs only had 18 and that is including um, they oh they only had seven in the fourth because they they started closing the gap a little bit I thought in the third um, but they only had seven in the third so they had seven in the first four in the second seven in the third none in overtime zero in overtime for Toronto that's pretty good and they won uh, that face off to start overtime too to start overtime yeah they did yep so. Um, and they had a couple of good looks. They, had, you know, they had a two on one at one point, but you know, they they broke it up. Avs broke it up. It was it was just it was a defensive clinic. Yeah, it really was. Like the the only points on the Av side, uh, McKinnon with the assist. Well, McKinnon and McCarr with uh, the assist on the Miko Rantanen goal. Which that's the other thing. If you're a Leafs fan, and and the one goal you gave up was that, it was just a deflection that went perfectly. Through the five yeah. hole, and and that was their goal. Yeah, but you're not going to apologize for that. It's kind of an excuse me goal. I wonder though because who uh, Miko was trying to pass. I I think it was Comfer who was kind of in in front of the net, or it might have been Erod uh, who was kind of like crashing. He wasn't really crashing. He was just off to the side. And I feel like if if that pass had gotten through, it would have been a goal anyway. Yeah. So um, it, it, it it was weird just to, to for it to go in the way that it did. And yeah, if you're a Leafs fan, you got to be like, man, our, our goal, both goalies played a great game, played a great game. And, and for him to give up that one, it's got to sting a little bit more. Yeah, that's it's one of those goals that you just 
you over you start looking at all the other moments that you gave up and you're like is this really the one that evened it up and pushed it this far mm-hmm. like we could have done better in so many instances yeah so um what do we got yeah so i'm thinking well mccarr hit 30 i mean it was overtime obviously but he hit 30 minutes again with Taves almost hitting 27. So those those are your workhorses. They were back there a lot. That Kale McCarr coast to coast, that was close to being high right, highlight real material. That was on a power play. Um, and it was one of those things where I love when he does this. Like he because he's the quarterback, obviously, and he he's the one that passes back to McKinnon. And I love when he makes the decision. Okay, the, the defense knows I'm going to do this, so they're kind of cheating a little bit. I'm just gonna go. Yeah. And it was Mitch Marner who, who like kind of didn't overcommit, but he was just, he was way up on defense and, and McCarr was just like, I'm gone. You're not yeah. going to keep up with me. And he made a couple of nice moves and just got a little bit, uh, too many sticks down by the, by the net. But what, what a move that was. That was it's beautiful. almost like Kale McCarr's doing a heat check. Like he knows <laughs> he could do it. He's like, I wonder if I can get away with it. Yeah. And he wants to carry as many players as he can. He'll make as many moves as he can just to keep whoever's on him honest. Mm-hmm. Like, make sure you're still on me. Don't worry yeah. about Miko and Nate. I'm also going to ruin you. Don't forget about me. Yeah. <laughs> as if they could. <laughs> um, all right. So let's hear from Bilt Bar. And then uh, a question I'm going to throw your way on how this game was played. Hmm. Um, is this the future? Of the NHL. You're giving me existential crises all over the place. But first, we're going to hear from <laughs> Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, then you have got to try a Built Bar. What makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. You heard me right. Real chocolate. And they come in unbelievably delicious flavor. Flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. They... Check the website while I'm doing this. See if they Mm -hmm. got anything new coming out. Uh, They even have that mint brownie that's uh, that's out. Like delicious, delicious flavors. Kyle's a big puff fan. If you like marshmallow, it's like a protein marshmallow bar. They got anything new? Limited flavor drop right now. Hit me. White chocolate cookies and cream. Whoa. Okay. Is it a puff or is it? It is a bar. bar. It is a bar. Chris is okay. team bar. I'm team puff. That's right. So okay. this, this one's catering to you, my friend. So I, uh, when we are done with this episode, uh, there's an order going in at uh, built.com. But if you, you can still order at built.com, like I'm about to do, um, or if you want to get your hands on built bars right now, you can go into your nearest Walmart or your local Sam's club and you can get built bars right now. Walk to the pharmacy section, grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up the four-bar box of cookies and cream, the regular cookies and cream, uh, double chocolate, or coconut puff. And if you're close to a Sam's Club, you can run in and grab the 13-bar box of the Hit Flavors Brownie Batter Churro. Can't go wrong with Built Bar. Get over there. Even use the promo code LOCK15. It should still work. And you can thank us later. All right, so uh, while this game was pretty evenly matched, um, I, I made the comment on our uh, minute summary video that these are two teams that don't look like they're going to be rivals uh, anytime soon. This was like watching a golf match. Uh, everything was like by the book, even though there were a lot of penalties called. I say that knowing that full, there was uh, eight, I think. Yeah, eight total penalties, but they were, you know, th- th- none of them were because of roughing yeah. or, or you know, just or fighting. God forbid, like there was no face washing in this game. Even when the goalie stopped the puck and there was a player right there, you never saw the, you know, the grab from behind and just pulling them back. None of that. And I put up on Twitter, like, is it just me or is this game not very exciting? And I don't want people to think like because I said that it wasn't an entertaining game. It was an entertaining game. It was a you just didn't have that bitterness in this game. There was not that, you know, rivalry. And I know they're not rivals, but still, when the Avalanche play like the Florida Panthers, like those teams kind of don't like each other in some kind of way. And, you know, when you have someone like Kachuk that's on that team, he's going to fight anybody that's around. You know what I mean? But you didn't get that in this game. And there is people out there who want to kind of 
and I'm using air quotes, like clean up hockey and they don't want the fighting. They want to take the fighting out and, you know, with the hits and everything. Um, I think the Quebec major junior league just announced like they might be completely removing fighting from their league. Like it, you're like, you're not going to do it. So um, I don't think the NHL will go that route for a very, very long time, but there is a, a, a section of, of, fans who do want that if that's what you want this was your game and if if this is how this is how you want hockey to be played i don't know like that's not a future for for the nhl that i personally want i'm not saying guys i don't like when guys just skate around just head hunting and stuff like that uh but the the physical the physical nature of of hockey and for the most part just wasn't there in this game uh just in terms of like the niceties and i feel like that is a part of the game that is what makes this game like kind of special uh and it wasn't there last night i'm fine with it i'm okay with it It was an entertaining game it was a fun game i was gonna say entertaining game it was a a fun game to watch but it it was just missing something and i think it was that i think it was that edge that neither team had i will give your i'll give the answer to your question in three points okay we talked to we talked to locked on leafs yesterday Mm-hmm. about sitting in that same spot forever really no there's no intensity to push for those extra two points you just get through the game you saw that good point right two put these two teams in the stanley cup final seven games there will be blood could be a little bit different and three these two teams passed in the hallway and said you know what i really miss that cadre guy and then they're <laughs> like you and, and then Austin Matthews turns around. He's like, you know what? You're right. And then they're like, but that Tyson Berry guy, ha! And everybody starts laughing <laughs> and like patting each other on the back. Yeah. These two teams got together. No, but yeah, yeah. honestly, like when it comes to points, like it's good that the Avalanche got two. They would have been fine with one. If they didn't get one, you look forward to the next one. Same with Toronto. There's not a lot to gain from this win other than momentum onto the next one. Toronto had nothing to gain at all. So it's you true. put something yeah. on the line. I think if they were, if they would have got two points and jump Boston or jump whoever, <laughs> whoever they have, Maybe you might've seen off. a little bit more intensity. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can see that. I, I can understand that. I, and, and you, you, it was just noticeable yeah. that it was missing. Right. Cause, cause the, 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 the mental aspect of the game is a part of the game and yeah. getting under the skin of a, of a player or something like that. Um, and these, these teams were just, I said on Twitter that they were just too nice to each other. It, what it was honestly with nothing on the line. If you walk out of there with nobody going down the hallway injured, that's an additional point. You walk out of there with three. Yeah, points. sure. And I think if, if there was something there to supplement the lack of physicality, like scoring, yeah. I, I think I wouldn't even be thinking of it right now. I think, well, yeah. that you know, that was a back and forth offensive game. That was fun. It was a defensive game, and that's fine too. Like I'm, I'm totally fine with a defensive game, uh, but just to not have that third aspect of the the mental game, and and you know, like I said, getting under the skin of the other players, uh, and because it was so low low scoring, it was just you could tell that it didn't have something. But I think I definitely think you're right. I, yeah. if, if there's more on the line, you will definitely see. Uh, I'm not gonna say you see bloodshed. I'm not looking for that, but you will see that aspect of the game come into play. Yeah, for sure. it was a matchup of two teams just trying to get to the playoffs. Yeah, healthy. Yep, healthy. Yep. Um, having said that, we'll wrap things up with our sound check. Kyle and I always pick one song each that we feel best summarizes the most recent game. These songs go up on a playlist over on Spotify. Just open up the app, search for the playlist LOA Soundcheck. This is volume number two. Follow along and uh, you'll know when new songs go up. So, uh, I, you know, what? I'll, I'll because I brought up that that topic, I'll start this one uh, with the whole, you know, defensive thing and, 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 you know, the lack of hatred that wasn't there. Uh, I am going with uh, one of the greatest bands of all time, in my opinion, and that is Radiohead off of one of the greatest albums of all time, in my opinion, and that's OK Computer. And uh, the song is called No Surprises. And that's what it was. Two teams just playing a hockey game. 
and just doing it kind of the the right way. Not not you know just going out there skating, taking their shots, playing defense, goalies making stops. A hockey game to a T is is what that was. Um, so and it was just there were no surprises anywhere. So that's what I'm going with. I love that choice. Yeah, great great pick. It, yeah. My musical taste is like a bowl of tricks. It's it's wacky. It's out there. And we're going back. This is not gangster rap or Disney song or heavy metal. Mm-hmm. This is Noah Kahan. And it's a he's a folk folky, like Mumford and Sons-esque type Mumford artist. Mumford and Sonsy. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's a genre now. Right. <laughs> the, yeah. It, the, the song is uh I, I was thinking about it during the second and third period, but it's it's a song called Northern Attitude. And there's Ooh. like a lyric. It's like it's how he loops into his chorus. It's forgive my northern attitude. I was raised out in the cold. And it's just wow, that Mumford perfect. and Son. Yeah, it's that yeah. Mumford and Son's vibe. It's just okay. it hits. All right. I will. Uh, I'm looking forward to that one. I'm always yeah. up for uh, a new artist. And, and you said he was from he's from Vermont. that area. Like, he's from Vermont. Yeah. yeah. Small town Vermont. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah small I found him on a late sure. show. And he opened up about like anxiety and depression, which is really something I was like, okay, I dig, I, I understand you, man. There's something to this guy. Yeah. All right. We'll check those out. So, all right. Uh, like I said, follow those on uh, Spotify and uh, check out those tunes. All right. That is going to wrap it up. We'll be back tomorrow. So are the avalanche. Uh, one more game in Canada. It's not the end of the road trip, but that's the end of the road trip in Canada. And that will be in Ottawa. So, uh, what do you think? Georgiev you, you go back to back? Honestly, I wouldn't. We were just talking about health. Like, give the man a break. <sighs> Let Ryan Reynolds feel really good about this purchase he's about to make in Ottawa. Put Keith Kincaid out there. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, I'm looking up right now. So. The as as we're ending this episode, it's the end of the first, and the St. Louis Blues are beating the Minnesota Wild three to one. If that holds true, and uh, that would put the the Avalanche are two points behind them. Georgiev starts. Hmm. Yeah, that's my prediction. If the Wild win, I don't think so. If if the Wild if the Wild come back and win, I don't think so. If the Wild lose and the Avalanche can catch them, Georgiev's in net. If you ask me so give me keith kincaid see. we shall see kyle's demanding keith <laughs> kincaid all right everybody that is going to wrap it up thank you for tuning in making it your first listen of the day that is always appreciated uh he is mr shaggy von doom kyle sullivan i'm chris maselli this is the lockdown avalanche podcast see you guys tomorrow